Pro has a lot of useful tools, but not many of them are weird. The exception, Wave Warp. What makes it stand out to me is how different it feels from most of Premiere's effects. You see, most tools in Premiere are built to fix problems. Shaky footage or color, but Wave Warp, it's just pure fun. It invites you to experiment. Whether I'm working on a music video, an experimental sequence, or just need a quick transition that feels fresh, this is one of the first effects I reach for. So to add Wave Warp to your clip, all you have to do is go to the effects panel and then search for Wave Warp. You should see it under the distort folder. Drag it onto your clip. Here's what each setting does. The wave type, you can think of this as like the flavor of your distortion. Sine and triangle give smooth, fluid motion. Square and sawtooth are more choppy or stuttered. And then there are others like circle, noise, or even smooth noise. Each one just behaves a little differently. And honestly, I think the best way to learn is just by trying them out. Wave height controls how tall the wave distortion is. Higher values will give you more extreme warping. Wave width adjusts the length or frequency of the wave. So lower widths equal tighter waves. Direction controls the angle of the wave. 90 degrees gives you vertical ripples. Zero degrees is horizontal. Wave speed sets how fast the waves animate across your footage. You can even keyframe this to ramp up or slow down over time, and we'll cover that a little bit more later. Pinning is useful if your clip is scaling or shifting. You can pin the edges to avoid distortion bleeding out of frame. I usually leave this off unless it's needed. The phase determines the starting point of the wave animation. It's really helpful if you're keyframing multiple clips and want to sync the distortion. Anti-aliasing helps smooth the edges of the waves in your effect, especially when you're using more jagged wave types like square or sawtooth. You've got three options, low, medium, and high. If you're editing on a slower machine, or just trying to keep things responsive while you work, low is totally fine. But before you export, you should probably bump it up to high. That'll give you the cleanest, most polished result in your final render. Wave Warp is especially powerful when you keyframe it. For example, you can start with no distortion or very minimal distortion, and then ramp it up and fade it out again, which is pretty dynamic. Here's one caveat though, at least to my knowledge, you can't toggle the effect on or off with a keyframe like you can with some other effects. But here's a simple workaround. If you set wave height to zero, the effect is essentially off. Then just move forward one frame, set a keyframe at your preferred height, and boom, you've got a clean on and off transition. Wave Warp is exactly the kind of effect I wish Premiere Pro had more of. Creative tools that aren't just functional, but inspire experimentation. I'd love to see Adobe go further in this direction. If you haven't used Wave Warp before, try it out. You can use it on a text layer, as a transition, or to give some B-roll a surreal twist. And if you've got your own favorite weird effects, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to check them out. Thanks for watching. If this helped or sparked an idea, give it a like, and I'll catch you in the next one.